Hello everybody, Skin Deep Beauty Vlogger here. I hope you're all really well. Today I'm continuing my Skin September series with my nighttime routine. I'm sat in my parents' conservatory, so it's a little bit bright. I hope the lighting's not too bad, but I figured I'm not really showing you makeup, so it's not that you need to see colour swatches. Hopefully you'll forgive me. On Monday I uploaded my morning skincare routine and also treatments that I'll indulge in maybe every week or every other week, depending on what I feel that my skin needs. And then on Friday, I'm going to be talking you through my eye care routine. So without further ado, let's get started. Of course, at night time, your skin is regenerating. You've probably been wearing makeup throughout the day, so you really want to give it a very deep cleanse, particularly if you're wearing an SPF as well, which you should be. And I really enjoy a balm style cleanser. I've been alternating between two balm cleansers, um, just depending on what I feel that my skin needs at that current time. First of all, there's the Age Delay by Alpha H. This is called a cleansing oil, but I really feel that the name is misleading. This is definitely a balm cleanser. It may have an oil base, but it is a balm. It's got rosehip and tangerine, so it's got a fantastic fragrance. It's quite a thick balm. And although the instructions say to dampen face and then apply this, I never do. I apply it onto dry skin on my face, massage it in all over, including over the eye area, obviously taking care not to pull the delicate eye area, but I sort of work it into my lashes as well, get off any mascara that I might be wearing, get off any mascara. And despite the instructions saying to emulsify this into a milk by splashing on water, I actually remove this with a flannel and I remove it in a circular motion very gently, but that acts as a gentle exfoliation, just buffing it off the skin. I find that a flannel is much better than a muslin cloth because not only are they cheaper, so I can buy them in bulk and I can use a fresh flannel every single time without sort of gathering any bacteria, but also they hold the heat of the water better. And what I'll do is I'll use sort of warm water on the flannel and I'll hold it over the skin once I've got that balm cleanser on before I buff it away. And that will really help to get deep into the pores. This is a really great cleanser. It's designed for mature and dehydrated and delicate skin types, but I do feel that many people would benefit from this. The only thing I don't like is that it does contain silica, but I can overlook that because I think the packaging is functional and I do find that this delivers good results. When I want something a little more indulgent, I reach for the Emma Hardy Amazing Face, the Natural Lift and Sculpt Moringa Cleansing Balm. This is so hyped, but I really do feel that it's deserving of the hype. The only thing I don't like, and many people have mentioned this, is that the packaging is rubbish. It leaks, it's cracked, as you can see. Um, it's not travel friendly. And I really feel that despite it initially looking good when you first buy it, it just isn't practical. I don't like that it's in a tub. I don't find it very hygienic. And I really feel that the packaging lets us down and takes away from some of that indulgent factor. But it smells absolutely incredible. It's a golden balm. A little goes a long way. I've had this for quite some time. And I just scoop a little bit out, massage it in, and I, and I remove it in exactly the same way as I would my Alpha H Age Delay, so holding a warm flannel over the skin once it's on and then buffing away lightly. What I really like about this is that it's really multifunctional. So if I feel that my skin maybe needs a little extra helping hand, maybe needs some extra hydration or just a little extra treat, then I'll leave it on my skin for 10 minutes as a mask. You do need to watch out if you've got very sensitive skin because this has got a high concentration of really good quality essential oils, but that can be irritating to some people. Again, I use this in the way that I've always learned to use cleansing balms by applying it directly onto my dry skin. It says, the directions actually state to mix a little bit of this in the palm of your hand with some water to create a cream and then mix it and then apply it onto your skin. I don't bother with that. I find it really effective at melting away makeup and removing any impurities from my skin the way that I use it. And I also don't bother with the special Emma Hardy microfiber cloths. I find them quite expensive. I've never bothered trying them. But I used to use the Evlon muslin cloths and I just find that simple, cheap flannel, that's what we call a washcloth by the way, um, works just as well. There are of course going to be those times when I'm too tired or a little bit worse for wear and I don't feel like taking my makeup off after a night out, for example. However, I always will take my makeup off. I really don't like to use cleansing wipes. I think that they're better than nothing. If you're not going to remove your makeup but you would use a wipe, then use them. But what I find to be a good compromise is using a cleansing water. And the one that I'm really enjoying at the moment is the This Works Clean Skin 5-in-1 Water. I don't like the packaging. Again, 
Although it looks sleek, I find it very bulky and it's not that functional. Despite having a pump dispenser, this squirts out in a very unexpected way, so I have had some wastage with it. This is a rose water cleanser and I wouldn't recommend using it every night, but it is good for those of you that have sensitive skin or rosacea. Rose is really good for treating things like that. It's also a great choice for those of you that like natural brands because of course this works is a natural brand. It's free from parabens and other such nasties. The reason that I prefer this over Bioderma, I do like Bioderma, but this beats it just that little bit because I feel that this really adds something extra to my skin which, is, which tends to be on the dehydrated side. Um, I have combination skin with an oily t-zone but I do get very dehydrated particularly in the winter and I find that this just adds something extra it leaves almost like a film on the skin but nothing that I find unpleasant it's actually quite nice it feels like it's left some goodness into my skin and I feel that, that probably comes from the ingredients in this such as olive oil um, and almond oil it's not an oil cleanser it is as I said a cleansing water um, you swipe over the face it literally looks like water it doesn't have any discernible scent um, but because it's that micellar solution, it's got those tiny particles of oil in that you can't really see, but I definitely feel that you can notice them left on the skin afterwards. So I would recommend this if you've got sensitive skin, if you like natural brands, and if you're looking for a good solution that's quick and easy to use when you still want to remove your makeup but can't really be bothered with a full cleanse. It is pricey, but I've had this bottle for ages, and as I said, I wouldn't recommend using a cleansing water every single night, so it will last you a long time. What's more, it's really quick and easy to use. Literally just pump one or two pumps of this onto a cotton pad and wipe it all over the face. You probably will need a few cotton pads to remove full makeup. For night cream, I'm still really enjoying the Rodeo Glam Tox Night. This is pretty pricey, but I do really feel that it adds something to my skin. It puts me off that it contains dimethicone because my skin doesn't normally get on that well with it. But nonetheless, I really swear by this product. Lots of my fellow beauty writers swear by it as well. It's really, really effective. And you wake up with your skin visibly looking improved. I really, really rate this product. It does contain retinol, albeit a mild version, because it's, you know, it's, certainly not, it's certainly not a cosmeceutical. But nonetheless, be careful if you're going out the next day. Your skin will be that little bit more photosensitive. But I always wear an SPF and UV protection anyway. I really like the pump dispenser of this, although it looks like a jar, you just press down on the lid, um, I'm not going to waste any by doing it now, um, and just the right amount is dispensed, so there's never any wastage, and it's also hygienic as well, love this. Before bed, I'll finish with a slick of my favourite lip balm. I love these EOS lip balms. You can see how well loved this is. They're a natural formula with fruity fragrances. There's lots of different varieties. And this is the summer fruit one. I just think they're great. They're the best lip balm formula that I've come across. And I've tried a lot. I've tried everything from chapstick up to creme de la mer. And these are my favourites. In my first skincare routine, I mentioned that I take an Omega fatty acid supplement and I'm still taking these. I'll link that video below in case you're interested. I wanted to post it as a video response, but apparently YouTube is stopping those now, so sorry about that. But that was my skincare routine for autumn, winter, for combination dehydrated and sensitive skin, which my skin type still is. These little glycerin capsules are fantastic. They're not particularly expensive considering how many you get in a container. Um, I take one a day. I take it at night because it's best to take vitamins with a normal, like, uncaffeinated drink, which is what I would obviously have at night time. And I really do feel that these have boosted the appearance of my skin. Also good for hair and brain and heart health as well. And this is the only supplement that I take for my skin. I know that somebody's asked me that. Somebody asked me about what supplements I take, and this is the only one I take, and I take this because of the skincare benefits. I really do feel that this has helped me to cure my acne from the inside out as well as my thorough routine in terms of topical application of products. They contain fish oil, olive oil, and evening primrose oil, and they're just really easy to take, and they're rich in omega-3, 6, and 9, so really, really good for you. I just wanted to touch on a couple of occasional treatments now that I may use at night. I'm not going to dwell on this one too much. You'll have seen it if you watched my morning skincare routine, which I will link below. This is the Good Things Stop That Spot Clearing Gel. Um, I'll just apply this topically onto any blemishes that I may have or that I feel are coming through and I find it to be very effective and affordable. Once or twice a week I will exfoliate and my current favourite exfoliator is the Clarins Exfoliating Toner. The only thing that I don't like about this is that it does contain alcohol which can be drying to the skin, it strips the skin of its natural oils. 
However, I feel that it's worth the trade-off because this is a glycolic AHA-based exfoliant and the alcohol makes those chemical exfoliants penetrate into the skin even more deeply so you get a really thorough yet gentle exfoliation. For those of you that don't know, this is a chemical exfoliant as opposed to a physical exfoliant. A physical exfoliant will be one of those ones where you can feel the granules and you sort of buff it into your skin. Whilst I do use them occasionally, I tend to veer away from them and prefer chemical formulations because they can be very harsh on the skin and they can even burst capillaries, particularly around your nose, which is where a lot of women do tend to get redness anyway. I definitely wouldn't use one if I suffered from rosacea, for example. However, a chemical exfoliant, whilst it sounds scary, they're usually based on fruit acids, so they just eat away at dead skin cells, they feel gentle, and the way you apply this, it's a liquid, almost looks like water, it's got a slight floral fragrance. Pop it onto a cotton pad, swipe it over the skin, and you're good to go. Just wait one minute before you apply any other products. Now again, because this is a glycolic exfoliant, you need to be careful in the sun because your skin will become more photosensitive. And I wouldn't really use this in combination with my Rhodial Glam Tox just because of that retinal ingredient. It's just going to sensitize the skin and I already have sensitized skin anyway. But I really like this. I would use it once, maybe twice a week, but no more than that. You don't want to over exfoliate your skin because it will lead to sensitivity. And I always exfoliate at night just because then my skin has a chance to regenerate and I'm not going straight out into that bright sunlight straight after exfoliating. And then lastly is a fairly new introduction to my skincare routine and this is the much hyped Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Concentrate. This is a serum, it's almost like a very lightweight oil. I wouldn't even say that it's got a serum-like texture in the traditional sense. Um, very chic dropper. You, you don't even need the amount that a pipette will give you. Literally a couple of drops. Um, it's packed with essential oil, so it feels very indulgent on the skin. You wake up with your skin looking brighter and just a nice soft texture, it feels fantastic, looks more youthful. I've been very, very impressed with how results driven this is. And I just will take it in my hands and sort of apply it gently, pressing it into the skin, really inhaling those gorgeous essential oils. It's a nice ritual before bed, but I certainly don't rub it into my skin or massage it in for ages, literally just lightly press it onto the skin. What's more, that helps to avoid any wastage as well. I love this product and I would highly recommend it. It's, you probably don't, to be honest, I wouldn't say you need this if you're in your sort of teens to mid-twenties, but if you're approaching 30 and beyond, then I would definitely check this out. It's just added that little something extra to my skin. And I wouldn't even say that I use it every single night. I more, I tend to judge whether I feel my skin needs this. I, you certainly could use it every single night, but I haven't really felt the need to recently. But I think going into winter, I probably will. And that concludes my nighttime routine. Obviously it's a bit more long-winded than my morning routine and the reason for that being that I really want to use those deep cleansing products, get the makeup and sun care off my skin. Your skin, re your skin regenerates at night so I think it's really important to not only remove what's been on your face throughout the day but also prepare it to really optimise any regeneration. I also sleep with a silk pillowcase because that prevents any of my expensive creams being absorbed into the cotton pillowcases and and rubbing against my skin. I prefer a silk pillowcase because that doesn't really happen quite so much. I thought that was a load of mumbo jumbo before I tried it and then I noticed that it did make a difference. What's more, I actually quite enjoy my nighttime routine. If you find that you are too tired then maybe bring it forward a little bit but I find that the whole ritualistic aspect and the indulgent products that I use really do help me to unwind. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Do look out for my eye care routine on Friday. I really hope that you're enjoying Skin September so far. Don't forget to check out my blog because I'm also going to be posting skincare reviews on there throughout the month. And if you're not already subscribed then please do so. There's a button just below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye!